techno bass. Tell techno you about techno bass. Okay. Um, techno bass is sort of a long project. Um, when we first started making techno bass, uh, Lon and I were working on it uh, out of our bedrooms. Um, we had just small studios. Um, we were still kids, uh, 18 years old. And we're just listening to craft uh, work and the stuff that I really liked listening to. And we wanted to make something like numbers um, and sort of stem off of that. And uh, it just, it was a long project. I mean, it took, I think, seven months of programming to come up with techno bass. And the samples that we we're going to use in it, um, you know, came from a couple te television shows. Um, this uh, one UFO show, I think it was called, uh, I think it was called UFO. And uh, that's where the, the samples come from. And um, it's just, I, I remember it taking a long time. Typically it takes three to five days to make a song. Um, this is uh, something that took seven months and we went back and forth for, you know, programming the sequences, you know, oh, it's not good enough. Oh, let's, let's make it longer, let's make it shorter. And uh, it just, it, it took a little while to make. And what all equipment did you use on that? Um, my SP-1200. Um, and then we just sampled uh, samples from records and from the TV show. And I think we actually borrowed on the last little bit of the record, we wound up borrowing uh, Gordon Chin's uh, Emacs sampler. And he had a keyboard Emacs sampler, and we loaded the samples into it, you know, for the, uh, the drops. How did you meet Gordon Chin? Um, I met him uh, for a while. We were searching for records. We were on this big quest to find old records to sample. And uh, we got off on um, Sample Road, <laughs> go figure. And uh, there was this uh, record store called Uncle Sam's, and that's where I met Gordon first. And uh, he's uh, he was the buyer for the 12-inch store, and we'd go in there and listen to records all the time. And we just all hit it off. And the next thing you know, we're uh, we're hanging out and working on music, and um, that's about it. Yeah. What was his personal interest in electro bass or Miami bass? Gordon? Hmm. I knew he liked making, um, you know, sample based records. You know, just he felt that they were timeless. Um, but that was, uh, he, he did a few records and he sort of lost interest, I believe, in just making that kind of music. And, um, you know, he has a, he still has a record store. He works for Uncle Sam's in uh, Miami and I think he owns it now. And um, he's doing really well, and, and that's his interest. You know, he, he loves it. You know, so. Now let's go over it once again. Um, do you want to talk about the B-side at all? The B-side, the Feel the Bass. Um, that was a great record. It was a lot of fun to make. Um, Lon did a lot of the programming on Feel the Bass. Um, you know, with the scratches were, you know, both of us. And the, the way that it was arranged, you know, was, was definitely both of us. Um, the rapper who we got for the uh, the second version of it was Kid Money, um, and that was his first record, you know, uh, prior to his fame with uh, Shake That Ass Bitch and Let Me See What You Got and uh, Stomp, was it? Uh, Scrub the Ground. Scrub the Ground, yeah. I was trying to be sad that you figured out. But you yeah, yeah, yeah. Out. Scrub the Ground. I know, for me to even remember all this, it's pretty crazy. So, um, yeah, and, and um, uh, I know that Cooley uh, wrote the, uh, the lyrics for it, and I remember them practicing it over and over, and then you know finally we wound up going in the studio, and, and uh, Sean did the uh, the rap for it, and it came out really good. We loved it. And um, a week or two later, we had it. Uh, it was being on Power Wars on Power 96, so the radio station had it in a sort of a contest where they'd play um, it against um, like a, a uh, was it like a Van Halen record. And then they'd have people call in and vote on the thing, and and it wound up winning against I think it was Van Halen, <laughs> and I couldn't even believe it, you know. And the next thing you know, it's just a hit, you know. And all the kids are driving around in their cars with the bass, and bass was you know sort of at its birth there, and that in those few years um, where every bass song that came out was just a huge hit, you know. So it's a, it definitely did really well for us. You know? Were those kids driving fifty five? <laughs> um, Chaos Records. Chaos, yeah. You want to talk about Chaos Records? Yeah, Chaos was, after we left uh, Base Station Records, we moved on and formed our own label, uh, a record label called um, um, Chaos uh, between Lon and I. 
and uh, we put out Feel the Bass and Techno Bass and um, that's where Chaos sort of came in, sort of as the, the next, uh, our next step to, you know, leave Bass Station and get out of a, a situation where we felt uncomfortable to a, a record label where we would call the shots. Was anyone helping you and Lon run the label or, or marketing the record? Yes, Gordon Chin was. He was he was marketing it to the uh, the one stops, but I mean it was it was all COD deals, you know, and he'd just sell it to all the record stores, and you know, it was he was basically he acted as our uh, our marketing. 